Hello everyone, today I am going to start from your grade 9 information and communication technology book. So the lesson is, the first lesson is prepare the specification for purchasing computer and peripherals. Okay, let's move. So from this chapter, we will cover the following. Computers and peripheral devices, selection of devices for a user requirement, creating computer specifications, non-technical factors to be considered in purchasing a computer. Learning outcomes. For, so from this lesson, you will be able to learn these things. Identify user needs for a computer and its peripherals. Specification of computer components and their meaning to users. Describe the basic specification of computer and its peripherals. Select the computer and its peripherals. According to the user requirements, it can be changed by the user requirements basic specification of computer and need peripherals processor types and its speed hard disk capacity monitor specification RAM specification VGA and sound so all these things you can learn during the lesson warranty included software after sale services identifies the user requirements in terms of technical specification determines the required technical specification so as i mentioned you already computer can be differ from person to person so let's study that now there's a computer shop then you can see there are two students they are going to purchase a computer so this girl is saying i need i need to buy a computer for my school assignments and to do accounts of my father's business so she needs to buy a computer to do her school assignments as well as and to do accounts of her father's business okay two purposes and here this boy is saying i need a computer that is mobile it will help me to show my graphic designs to my teacher it will help me to study from anywhere anytime so in here you can see three purposes okay and here are there any computers to suit the requirements of both of us yes many types of many types are available we can either buy a computer we can get a computer assemble to suit our requirements let's go and uh, let's go in and take a look around so they are going to buy a computer which uh, which is needed for them their needs identifying the user the one who uses a computer is generally referred to as a user if you are using a computer you are calling as a user different users working in different areas in information and communication technologies have different designations so usually uh, each and every people they have their all needs so they are using their computer to do their needs so they have this different designations the following table shows a few such examples there are few examples there are many more things types of users and their work here now you can see here username and the task okay as a user if i take programmer so his task is develops computer programs as a network administrator manage and maintains computer networks as a system analyst designs information systems software engineer develops software computer application assistant uses office application packages for office related tasks web developer develops and maintains websites the sixth chapter presents you a further study of the user you'll see now here there's a note users can be classified into mainly two categories those are the first one is system users and the second one is end users now here end users uses the software maintained by the system user now you will get confused what's this because actually this is the meaning of this usually system users they are making the softwares and as the end users who are the end users here we are the end users 
by the system users they are creating softwares and as the end users we are using those softwares as the end users that's the meaning of that okay okay and the next one is selection of a computer to suit user requirements so as i told you already we have to uh, we have to buy a computer we have to choose a computer to do our needs easily okay so each and every need is differ from the other okay user requirements relate to tasks that are carried out by using computer now here in this picture you can see many tasks and some examples for user requirements these are the examples for user requirements playing computer games nowadays we can see many gamers preparation of documents access internet editing audio video material graphic designs now you can see here five requirements five needs okay so but there are many more requirements examples for types of computers that are available in the market mainly we can uh, categorize them into two parts the first one is non portable computers and the second one is computers for mobile use these are the mainly two parts uh, you can uh, uh, see in the market as the uh, if, if i get the, the non portable computers there are mainly we can uh, divide into four parts those are server computers workstation desktop computers all in one computers now you can see here server computer and the, as a workstation computer you can see this one desktop computer this thing and all in one computer for and uh, this we can take this picture computers for mobile use laptops notebooks tablet computers smartphone a computer to suit user requirements can be selected from those available in the market or a computer can be assembled to suit user requirements computer can be classified according to their nature and use as follows now i'm going to explain the about clip okay so non portable computers as i mentioned you already there were some pictures so i'm going to explain what are the non portable computers okay putala now server computers workstations desktop computers and all in one computers so all these things we can take it as non portable computers let's see what's that are all operated using the main electricity power supply that is very compulsory so we have to give uh, we have to uh, combine it with the electricity power supply and these computers are large in size and relatively heavy so these are the physical things that you can uh, identify whether it has a non portable computers or a mobile computer okay so as a portable computers we can see three types so the first one is we have to connected with it uh, electricity power and those are large in size and relatively heavy these three things we can see and therefore they are installed and used in places like houses schools or offices and computers for mobile use if we want to identify so these computers are for mobile use so we can take these things laptops notebooks tablet computers and smartphones or oh, all those things we can take uh, computers for mobile use can be considered for mobile use personal use that mean they operated with rechargeable batteries i think i don't want to explain this further because now you all have good knowledge about these things uh, therefore they can be used when traveling in buses trains airplanes or from any convenient place so how many uh, parts are there non portable and computable for mobile use there are two parts and uh, important the following are useful in learning more about computers 
printed or electronic commercial advertisement on computers magazines and newspapers about computers website providing information on computers obtaining information from expert in computers visiting the computer shops and gathering information so all these are really uh, useful in learning more so computer peripheral devices this is the main thing of our topic today so we are going to identify what are the peripheral devices input devices are used to feed the data and instruction to into a computer okay usually we are using input devices to feed the data we give, enter to data and instruction to the computer storage devices are used to store data so when we are entering data via input devices so storage is uh, storage devices they will take those data and they will store data as output devices are used to provide the information proceed with the input data accordingly input storage and output devices are called peripheral devices so you know, accordingly input is input storage and output devices are called peripheral devices so all those things are we are calling them as peripheral devices so let's uh, study more about these things okay peripheral devices now we can uh, as i mentioned you already we can categorize them into three parts input output and storage if i take keyboard as the input device now i am entering data uh, through my keyboard so as uh, the uh, if i can get the uh, details i can get the data from my output device that's from the monitor and those data will storage in my hard disk drive and if i take mouse if i uh, enter data or else if i select the data through my mouse so uh, i can get it from my printer so those data will storage uh, in my optical disk drive and if i enter data if i give data from my input device of microphone so i can get those data from the speaker and those data will store in my flash drive these are the few examples of storage devices but there are many more things you can store your data okay so these are the mainly uh, mainly primary storage devices in your computer and the touch screen so touch screen is a common one you can enter data that mean you can uh, use it as a input a device and as well as you can take the data from the uh, output device as well so this is a common one so uh, those data will storage in magnetic tape drive the touch screen can be used to input data as well as to display information hence that means therefore it can be used uh, as an input and output device if they ask you to write uh, a common device that mean input and output device you have to write touch screen and uh, hope to come with computer specifications see you soon thank you